Just rock stars! I am so excited to be back with you today. My name is Holly Ann Knight, The Stringed Story, and it is my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Today, though, we are continuing this series we've started in September called Spruce Up Your Sewing Room. You know, we've got spring cleaning, but I don't know about you, but if you've got kids or grandkids going back to school, when my kids go back to school, I'm like, it's time for a new routine. Let's decorate all the things. Let's redo things. Let's spruce up our sewing rooms together. So if you will indulge me just a moment, I'm going to put my laptop up here and make sure that all y'all can see me. Let me make sure it's muted so we don't get feedback. I'm going to make sure I get this shared over. So if you are logging on with me live right now, do please drop a hello in the comments so that I can see you. I'll be greeting you guys as I see this pop up. Let's get this going. Oh good, I did not cut off my own head. That is always a great moment. All right, mark our pin to top. Hello, hello. Oh guys, it feels so good to be back. As many of you know, we were at the beach last week. Um, my grandfather passed away a couple of weeks ago and one of the things we do, hello Karen, hello Holly, hey Sherry. Oh, I see a whole bunch of you, how brilliant. Um, let me see if I can share. Mm -hmm. That's not working. I would like to share it to a group if it'll let me. Here we go. Um, come make a pressing board with me. All right, so my grandfather passed away a couple of weeks ago, and one of the things we do as a family, um, when we have a family grief, is we go away together as a family, and we just have some time. And so we had the opportunity to go to the beach with my family, and it was an absolutely just precious week. A great time of just fresh air and sun and salt. And even though I know my Free Motion Quilting Academy folks have seen me, because we had our first, second, our second Q&A last week, and I did a couple of guild lectures, but I haven't been here with y'all in a couple of weeks, and I'm so thrilled to be back. Thank you all so much for your patience and encouragement, as I know our schedule has been funky so far this month. I'm really glad to be getting back into our group. So, all right, if you are here with me, I see all these good mornings. Welcome, welcome. Bonjour, I'm so glad you're here. Note to all of y'all, first of all, this is just my favorite thing and I'm so excited to be back, but more uh, relevantly, there is a link in the caption of this video. It's gonna take you over to the blog and everything I'm gonna show you today is actually shown and explained a little bit better, I think, on the blog. They at least pair well together because what you're gonna see on the blog is actually when I made this, this pressing board originally with this fabric. Now, you'll notice it's time for a new pressing board cover. I've had this pressing board for almost three years. Um, so what I did today in anticipation of our, in, yeah, anticipation of our time together is simply take the fabric bit off, okay? So let's jump in. I'm gonna step you guys through the supplies you need to make this pressing board. And then I'm actually gonna demonstrate for you attaching this fabric, because I think that's kind of the trickiest bit, okay? So first of all, this is, this is a pretty hefty pressing board because it is large, it is three quarters inch plywood. Um, but this is really great in two situations. There's probably more than two, but these are the two that I think of. Um, in my sewing room over here to my left, and you'll see the pictures on the blog, I've got a dresser and I use that as my ironing station, my pressing station, my ironing board, if you will. It creates a little extra storage in here. Um, it's a you know, reasonably nice looking piece of furniture. It adds to the room, all the things, right? Um, but what I found is I really, I wanted a big pressing surface. And so I created this board to fit on that. So you can create a pressing board like this if you also are like, ooh, I have a dresser or a sideboard that I could repurpose in my sewing room and make it, you know, kind of part of the decor, et cetera. But this also works well if you need a pressing board that you can set up um, and then put away. And like I said, like it's hefty. Like this, you know, it's, it's not like oh, I'm just gonna stroll off with it. But it would work if, say, you sew in your dining room. Maybe there's a sideboard in your dining room, or maybe you just want something to put on your dining room table. Or maybe in your sewing room, you just have one table and you use it for cutting and pressing. This would be easy enough you know, to set to the side when you're going back and forth between cutting and pressing, or you know, slide behind a piece of furniture to store it. But still have a nice, hefty, um, firm board for when you are doing your pressing, okay? So it's portable, but it also is a great way to make something custom. Like this table here, you'll see it's, this is about the right length, but this table is deeper. If I wanted this to be my official cutting er or pressing area, you know, I could even get a piece of plywood that was deeper than this, okay? So the first thing you're going to need in order to make this pressing board is going to be three quarters. And this might even be up. No, I think it's three quarters. Yeah, three quarters to one inch plywood. 
Um, and then we're going to get two layers of batting that is several inches larger all the way around. I think on the blog I put five inches larger all the way around because um, we're simply going to wrap and staple it. You'll also want some rubber feet and then the general tools in order to do this. So a staple gun, some pliers, scissors, hammer, that kind of thing. Now, some of y'all are like me and you're, you know, feel relatively confident with these tools. And once you've got, you know, kind of the board and stuff, you're going to kind of take it from there. But this is also a fun little sweetheart project, right? This would be kind of a fun thing to put on a birthday list or something that your significant other could make if he's handy, etc. All right, let me jump on here. I wanted to see some of these comments really quick. Oh, Karen, yes, the trip was so wonderful. It was really just lovely. Um, oh, those of you who are in the smoke, I'm so, so sorry. Oh, my heavens. Please, please, please be safe, all y'all. Um, our trip was incredible. And, and here's the thing, guys. <laughs> Low-key brag. I slept eight hours a night almost every night we were gone. <laughs> I know that sounds like a crazy flex, but I, those of you who have been around here for a hot minute knows I'm not known for my sleeping ability, so it was a big deal. All right, so once we've got this board, your first step is going to be to take that double layer of batting, and it can be a single piece of batting simply folded in half, which is what I did here. You'll spread that batting out on your table, set your board on top, and literally wrap this like a Christmas present. You notice over here I even did a little bit of a mitered corner, um, but you're literally just going to wrap this up and staple it in place. I've got staples about every three inches. Um, I stapled one side down and then when I folded up the other edge, I stapled it again. And then you'll take your scissors and you can kind of trim the excess. So you've just got, you know, an extra inch, inch and a half from the staples to the edge. That's simply so that we can then bring the fabric a little bit further even, um, but also not so close that, you know, if it gets snagged that it's going to rip up too easily. Now the double layer of batting is just to help absorb the heat from the iron, but we don't want it to get too fluffy. Make sure you use 100% cotton batting. There are many times in quilting where there are not hard and fast rules. Here, I really would recommend using the cotton. It's gonna handle the heat of your iron the best, okay? And I like the two layers, like I said, just to help absorb that heat. I don't know that I would go thicker than two layers. One, because it's gonna be a pain in the butt to staple. Um, but two, you don't want it to get too squishy. Like the whole like lovely thing about actually making this out of plywood is that it is nice and firm. Now, from this point, it's going to be time to add our fabric. And this is going to put, uh, this is going to be the part that we do together. So Kat, I did not use Insole Bright. I've been using this for almost three years, had no issues with it. I actually used batting scraps to make this. This was like a weird piece that was like long and cut off of the side of a quilt and I kind of folded it up to get this double layer. Um, you absolutely could, but you know. Um, uh, no, Janine, I would ask for the long arm. I would ask for it, but you know, maybe maybe your husband gets you the long arm and his son makes you the pressing board. We can have, it's 2020 y'all, we can have all the things. <laughs> that may not always be true, but you know what I mean. Um, so my, my question around any other natural fiber batting, so wool, bamboo, any of those, I don't know that you're necessarily going to have issues with them, but we know that cotton is, does a good job of withstanding high heat, right? That's why it's the highest setting on our iron. Um, and in this case, I just don't want any chance of anything having, having a lower flaming or scorching point than your fabric, all right? Brilliant. Um, you made yours, then attached it to your iron. I'm now very curious about that, Terry. Um, I, I love this chatter about the machine. Y'all are hilarious. I love it. I love it. All right. So let me move this for just a second. And we're going to spread out this fabric. Now, as I mentioned, there are um, kind of some photos of the thing up on the blog. Um, I know that navy can be a bit of a challenge in terms of visibility. Um, and trust me, I've got other fabrics out and looked at them, but here's the thing, y'all. I have to look at this. <laughs> I have to look at this pressing board and use it for like the next year or two. And, and navy's what I want, so we're going to make the visibility work together. Let me spread this out. What I'm doing is I'm basically laying this flat. You can see I haven't even really pressed this all the way out. It's because I'm going to pull it tight, and it's going to be totally fine. This is also unshrunk fabric, so as I press with it, and use you know steam or mist and then iron this fabric is going to shrink up a little bit so some of these little wrinkles i'm just it's not worth it um 
Good morning, good morning. Exactly, Lydia. I love us some navy. So once I've got this up, I'm going to lay this board on, but it's actually going to be hanging off the table a little bit because I want to make sure that I leave enough room. See, I'm just making sure that I've got room to wrap here. Yep, and we're doing great. And for this edge, I have enough fabric that I'm actually literally like wrapping paper. I'm going to turn my edge under and pull this up. Now, before I actually staple it in place, checking the other side, I got plenty of fabric over here. So what we'll end up doing is trimming on this side the excess, but we're going to do that after we've made sure we've pulled this nice and tight. Now, everybody pray that the staple gun works because that's the one thing I'm nervous about this morning is what if my staple gun doesn't serve us well? Ha! Reasonably well. Now, you'll notice here, this is very hard plywood. The staple's not going to go all the way in every single time, so I keep a nice little hammer handy just to firm that up, okay? So I'm going to go ahead, just like, I mean, think like Christmas wrapping, right? Now, you really could do this. I'm choosing navy because it's going to coordinate with the aesthetic of string and story. None of us are surprised. Um, but you really, you could do any fabric on this. You could make it, you know, a big, bold print. So many things. You know, I chose navy because um, it's going to look nice with the white and the gray that I'm going to be doing as I am changing up some things in my sewing room. Um, but also because I tend to take pictures on my pressing board. Also, I'm curious to see, isn't this great? This was a high school graduation gift. And I've got a big old hammer, but this one is great because I can put it down in my pin cup. So I can literally just like always have it. And it's got screwdrivers. You can find these online, guys. They make great graduation gifts. It's got a couple of different sizes of screwdrivers in it. Um, you know. <laughs> um, I don't think the navy will bleed. I've never really had any issues with it. Um, I also don't use a whole lot of white. Um, and fortunately, if it becomes a, like, if it becomes a bit of a problem, this will be easy to take off and replace, but those are great things to be thinking through. I love it. You know, Lydia, I know purple would look better according to you. So, there's that. so the thing I see here is like, it's gone in, this fabric is tacked down, um, but we want to just make sure that it's nice and flat because we want to make sure that these feet, of course, end up being the tallest thing on the back which we'll talk about those in a minute. So I'm just gonna continue going across. I probably really should have made sure that I had more staples up here just in case we run out. All right, and hammer these down. Oh yeah, but the other thing with the baby guys, I'm curious to see if it shows scorch marks considerably less or if it just ends up being like a linty pain in my butt because all this lint will stick to the starch and all of those things. So it's a bit of an experiment. This, by the way, this was like a home deck linen kind of fabric. It worked really, really well. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're wanting something other than quilting cotton. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually... Just gonna give this a little bit of a tug. I'm just making sure that we're we're pulled snug on the other side. I think we are. And I'm actually gonna fold up this side and staple it before we do those edges. So I'm gonna scoot my pressing board up so I can kind of use the edge of this table as a bit of a cutting guy. Let me make sure I'm not missing any questions. I thought about gray. I did not have enough gray yardage on hand. I'm like. Y'all know that I always like to shop my stash. Um, that's a little extra right now. Like I'm being a little extra like using the stash partially because there's a couple of fat corner bundles I wanna buy. And I gotta just make sure that I'm using what I have before I buy more fabric, you know? I did have um, a navy print that I considered using that was a Ruby Star Society. But I'm also still kind of low-key hoping to make a shirt out of that. So, you know, pick what works for you. What adds to your aesthetic? What makes you happy? What are you going to want to look at all the time, you know? 
Okay, this is great, Lisa. Lisa says she used black fabric and she doesn't see iron marks. See, and that's what I'm hoping for because that one got super scorched up. I'm sure there's at least one of you on here who is significantly better at using a staple gun than I am and is, is just cringing. And ha So if you are significantly better at using a staple gun and you have tips, lay them on me, girlfriend. Oh, we might be out of staples. Never a dull moment, right guys? We are indeed. All right, let's see if I have more over here. Do, 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 do. I feel like I've still sent some up here. All right. We gotta improvise because I could have sworn that he put more staples up here for me, but I don't see them over there. So here's the thing. I don't know that I recommend making this permanent, but in a pinch, we're gonna use a little bit of painter's tape so that I can show you how to wrap this. And then I will add more staples later. How's that? And to be perfectly frank, I'm curious to see how well this sticks. All right, so I've stapled on as far as I can. I would continue stapling under normal circumstances. But as the thing that I forgot to do before we went live was check to make sure there were extra staples, we're going to switch to painter's tape. We call this flexibility. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Marie has an electric staple gun. I love it. So, Ken, there's a couple of things that I like be about this better than a regular ironing board, okay? Um, one is that I can customize the size. Two. By putting it on top, uh, this is a great, this is a great question by the way, and I think I'm going to add these answers into the blog later when I add this video. Um, so I can customize the size. Two, I can put it on a more stable piece of furniture than an ironing board. One of the things that I hate about ironing boards is they're not very stable, right? And so they wobble a lot. It's just a pain. It's just a pain. Um, you know, if that doesn't particularly bother you, that's cool. I just find it really frustrating when I'm wanting to press, you know, fat quarters or even yardage that it's not a very large surface area and I find it kind of wobbly. So I can customize this. I can put it on a more stable surface. Um, and I like that it is um, quite portable. Now, it's not necessarily more portable or easier to store than an ironing board, um, but because you can make it bigger and it still stays relatively easy to store, that feels like a win. Um, and as one of you guys mentioned, let's see, um, Connie says, I want to make a small ironing station next to my machine with a wooden TV table. Yeah, you could do the same thing on top of a TV table. Um, and you wouldn't even have to use a separate board. But if you wanted um, to keep the TV table, you know, kind of usable as a TV table, you could make a board that is the size of the top of the TV table and set it and it would make it you know a little bit easier to pack up or whatever slash if you're going on retreat then you don't necessarily have to take the whole tv table when we ever get to have retreats again you could just take the board right a real easy portable ironing station all right let's see how nicely i can fold up these corners shall we i don't even know if you guys can see me all the way over here oh you can brilliant brilliant trying to make this like a real crisp and it's it's gonna be a challenge oh that's not too bad that's not too bad this is where I do wish I had another staple elbow down so the big thing with you know why I don't recommend leaving this tape on I'm doing this so that we can continue our tutorial here um, is that as you're using the pressing board, I question whether or not it'll really be sturdy enough or if it'll end up kind of popping loose. Um, so I'll have to track down some staples and come back in here and add them. But it's, it won't be a big deal. All right, so on this side. And again, this is, I would love to put a staple right here. But guys, this is just an example of how in our quilting, we just go with the flow, you know? Sometimes sideways things happen, but you know what? Here's the pro of this, right? 
I may not be getting to show you the whole thing with staples, but y'all don't have to listen to the staple gun anymore. Which, I don't know about you, but I find staple guns really loud. Okay, so you see how I've just wrapped this up here? I'm going to do the same thing here on this other side. Let's see. What am I missing over here? Should, let's see. So this, yeah, this is, um, this is some heavy duty painter's tape, but you're right. It's not going to be permanent. Um, and I'm not using larger pieces because I'm planning on removing it as soon as I can grab some more staples later. Yes. No worries, Judith. There'll be a replay. A board that has the same shape end to end would be more practical than a regular iron board. Yes, I agree. Gorilla tape, Terry, that would be so great. It's like, <laughs> honestly, as I'm doing this, I'm like, you really could tape this. So like, if you are like, I want to do this, but either I don't have a staple gun, a staple gun freaks me out, et cetera, et cetera. I kind of feel like duct tape would work just for what that's worth. I feel like you could put some like painter's tape down like this to kind of hold it and then just get that duct tape and run it down along. That would make my Papa Joe proud. He was a very dedicated user of duct tape. And uh, you never quite knew what he was going to duct tape next, except that you could almost be guaranteed that whatever he was duct taping, he probably shouldn't have been. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, it, so even though this is the green painter's tape, it's a little bit tackier. Um, if you're looking for a tape that will let you kind of temporarily put up um, a quilt or a quilt top to take some photos, this is the tape I recommend because it is more tacky than the blue tape. Uh, but I'm not sure that this is, you know, this is not going to be durable for use. This is for the continuation of our time together. i got to decide how I want to get this up in here. Here we go. This is a great warm-up for, for Christmas presents, you guys. So you guys can see how nicely this just wraps up. You could pop some little... Staples in here. You could also use like little tiny nails. Um, if you, you, again, I would use the tape in that situation to kind of position and hold everything down. And then you could kind of finalize it with those little nails and just pop the tape back off. Okay, literally, Lydia, it's hilarious that you say that because that's what Papa Joe would do in the garden. Like, we came in one day, we were coming to visit, and we got there. And he, like, reattached the sleeve of his shirt or something. And my dad and I were like, say what? And he's like, you got caught in the garden. And just, like, moved on. Like, like not a big deal. Made roses out of it for gift wrap. That's precious. I love it. All right. So what we have here, I'm about to turn this over. Now, keep in mind, the staples would be just as fast. So notice, we've been here together for, what, 25 minutes? And now granted, I have my supplies and I already have my batting attached. But what, what that boils down to is once you have your supplies kind of laid out, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, you're going to have yourself a nice, fresh, gorgeous pressing mat. Like I said, this is going to shrink up so fast. And that's one of the reasons that I chose to use unwashed fabric for this is that that way it is going to shrink up and get really crisp. This is going to make a nice, firm pressing surface as I get it over there and add a nice kind of aesthetic to my sewing room as well. So guys, before I wrap this up, are there any questions about how to make this pressing mat together? Um, I hope you guys, yes, I agree, damn it. Staples are gonna be the like best to go to here, but there's a few alternatives and a pinch that'll at least get you started. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying this series. It's been so fun to be re-releasing these tips to you guys, but I am so glad to be here to be on video with you this week. I've missed being here these last couple of weeks and it's fun to get to do this together. Plus, I've clearly needed a new pressing board for a hot minute, so I'm really excited to get this over there. Molly says it needs legs. Oh yes, the feet. Thank you, Sandy. <coughs> so excuse me. Once we get our fabric here on the back, preferably stapled down, um, I have these little half inch rubber feet um, they came with an adhesive, but Hubster drove a quick little screw through them for me. And it just allows it to sit up just a hair so none of those staples are scratching the surface of my table over here. But also it keeps it from moving. Like this thing is not going anywhere. So first your board, then your batting, then your fabric, then your feet. Super quick, super easy. A lovely touch to your sewing room or sewing space to make a custom size 
Nice firm pressing forward. Brilliant, brilliant. Yes, tiny feet. The navy look, doesn't the navy look so good? I'm really excited about it, Lydia. Even just as I flipped it over, I was like, oh yes. Oh yes. Um, so these are just little, these are just little rubber feet. Marie, if you click over to the blog, I actually linked to them on my Amazon link. Um, and I conveniently included a link to a staple gun as well, in case you need one. I'm going to assume it'll come at least with enough staples to make your pressing board. So guys, thank you so much for being here with me today. Do go pop over and visit the blog to review these steps. And I will see you back in the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group on Saturday night for Social Hour. Have a great week, guys.